Okay, we're back with another React.js tutorial. Today we're gonna work with forms. I'm gonna show you how to post and do all that with forms. And if you stuck around with me throughout the whole React.js tutorials, you'll see that uh, we set up our homepage here. We set up URL routing to different pages. I showed you how to create these product links here and by passing parameters, passing by prompts, uh, passing using use context and all that. So uh, all of that has led us up to now to do forms. We're gonna go into the contact us page here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a simple form where we can save those values on the form and we're gonna post it. And we're gonna use this thing called use state and use effect. And it's very valuable, very important. So you really need to learn this because you're gonna be using it throughout all of your pages and all through your project. So stick around for this is very important. <laughs> All right, so the only page we're going to work with today is the contact.js page and is inside of our pages folder right here. What I'm going to do is, uh, what do we know about forms, right? We're going to set up a simple form with a form tag, just like that. And with our form, we have a label. We're going to take in an email for a label. And the email is an input text field, right? Type equals text. This is a simple HTML form that you see everywhere. We'll have another label here call message i'm just setting up a very simple uh, form here text area and then we have a button right type equals submit so this is the very basic element of form well you actually need an id in here email a name email let's do the same thing for the text area id equals message uh, name equals message so we can agree that this is a very simple element of a form right here. So normally in a form, when we click on the submit button, it's going to submit this form using an action, right? Action, and we tell it where to go to, API slash uh, contact form. And normally with an HTML form, we would have like an on submit here, right? And then this would do a JavaScript function so that we can check our form to validate it to make sure everything is fine before we submit. Well, that's not how we're going to do it in React here. Take that out. In React, when we hit submit, we're going to have this thing called on click. And then we're going to handle that submit. So we're creating a function here to handle the submit. So let's create that right here. Const handle submit arrow function. And then we need to take in an argument called an event. So I'll just put E. So E dot prevent default. So this means that uh, when we hit the submit, we don't want it to do anything yet. We're going to handle it. We don't want this action to occur. So we're going to prevent that default action. So now that we got this handle submit, so for any other regular form in another programming language, we would hit the submit, the form would submit to the page again. So that does a whole UI refresh and it would submit all the values of this form and we have to validate it, do this whole thing. So in React, we don't want it to refresh. After we hit the submit, we want to handle all of the validation in here. Well, how do we capture these values here on these input fields in the text area? Because we're not actually submitting this form. All we're doing right here is telling it, run this function when you hit submit. So we need to grab these values here. How we do that is we're going to have a value in here. Right now it's empty. And then we're going to have an on change event. So with this on change, we need to create some variables up here so that we can save this value for both the input and the text area fields. So to save the values of these fields here, we need to use this thing up here called use state. So let's import it. Import use state right there from React. So I'm going to handle use state first. I'll go over use effect after, but use state is for saving these values here. And how it works is that we create some variables up here. Go to do a const and you put into a bracket like that and we're going to give our variable name email and then we have a function in here called set email this is the default use state and right now we're going to set it to an empty string for the email so this use state function here it returns us a value into this variable every time and so this is the function that we use called set email when we set the email it's going to set it to the value and return it into this variable for us to use throughout this whole application so let me show you right here on change takes in an event e to arrow function and we're going to call set email on change is saying with this event for this input field with that input field event every time we're typing in a value i want you to take that value event dot target dot value 
we want to take in this event every time we're typing in an input take that event target which is this input field take the value of it and set it to the set email so we're putting it into the set email function and so when set email takes in that value it uses this use state and re returns it right back to this email value for us so now we can use this email value throughout our whole application right so now I can put it in here and so every time this thing changes on an event it's going to update it and how react works is anytime a value is updated it's going to update it on or form for us here so it always gets updated into this input field so let's save this and here is our simple email form right now it doesn't look nice so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to put in some CSS for us right now class name equals contact form I created some very simple CSS around this already so uh, here we go save it and look at that look at how nice it came out with some very simple CSS that I put inside my app CSS right here and so right inside my app CSS I already already created this you know here's the contact form that we gave it the class name right here and then I just use that to set up the labels here the input the text area and other stuff the button here just to make it look nice so what I'm trying to show here with this on change is that anytime you're typing in here like that every change gets updated on this page here because we're using this set email and then we're taking this event and we're setting the target value and then when, when that gets updated to this variable right here called email it's going to update the page with that value so this will always be saved uh, let's do the same thing with this text area we're going to set a value and we'll give this a message variable right and then we'll say on change equals and it's the same thing we take in an event we're going to say set message and then the event target dot value but we didn't create this yet so let's create it up here by using use state message set message equals use state empty if I set this to a default default value like that coder Kai at gmail.com right anytime this page gets refreshed here look at that the value is default on here anytime I do that uh, use state will always run first it sets the values and this will keep our state value throughout this whole form and that's how you update it using use state so let's see how our handle submit works here when we're clicking on the button when we're clicking on this button these two values should be captured in here and we can use it coder kai so let's do this 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 is a test message and so those values are now saved and when i click on this i can now console log this email I'm just going to do something very simple here by console logging the email and the message save that so when I click on this now it should console log this and how you check that is uh, you go into your developer tools here and you go to console and then uh, you can check it out right here see it output the email and then this is a test message see how it console log that test number two and then I submit that oh look at that test number two so it logged that for us we can see that everything is submitting correctly and this is where we can do our error handling so let's say if we don't want anyone to just submit a blank message you know there needs to be a message in there before they submit it so if not message then let's set an error or error message here message is empty please type a message and uh, we need to also create a state for this so that we can use the error message so const error set error equals use state right now there is nothing in the error and so we need to do a set error so there's our error we're going to set it and then let's just display the error down here actually let's wrap this around a p tag with class name equals required we save it let's close this out so if I leave this message empty and I submit it <laughs> oh I forgot don't wrap that in around a string because it will output that entirely in a string we want this to be JSX code so it's going to output HTML when we set this error I'm gonna leave the message empty submit it and there we go message is empty please type a message 
and then if we type a message test see now we need to clear that if it's not so else set error to empty so here we go again error test and there we go <laughs> so that's how you uh, save state values on this form using use state let's get into this thing called use effect right now because uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create a drop down menu on on here we see this in a lot of contact forms it's going to have a select menu and inside our select drop down we're going to have some options right and right here we're saying how did you hear about it so sometimes we'll see an options of like Google web search or something right you know they found us from a friend so those are some of the questions I'll ask right here that we might have on a drop down for a contact us form or any other form. You see this a lot. And so I don't want to hard code these values. What I want this contact us page to do is that when this page loads, I want to pull information and preload this drop down for us. And usually we'll pull that information from our database. We'll have like an API that returns us JSON code where we can uh, get the data and populate this drop down. But I don't want to create that API. We're going to go to this thing called JSON placeholder right here. It's called jasonplacer.typeico.com. A lot of developers use this. This website created us an API already. I'm going to use this users right here because it outputs us JSON code. This is just test JSON code. So all of these items here has a website. So I'm going to pull that uh, website item uh, by taking this. I'm going to copy it. And we're going to pre-populate this for us. So um, we're going to do a fetch on this. So let's create a function up here called const fetch data arrow function so react gives us a fetch HTTP function already right it's called fetch very simple uh, actually I'm going to do an async on this so let's do async and we're going to await on this so we're going to wait for this fetch to complete by fetching this URL here right here this API for users and it's going to return us all this data and then I'm going to take that response and we need to convert it to JSON data because it's initially when the React fetch fetches for us, it doesn't change this to JSON data. It's not output it as that. So we need to output it as JSON data so we can use it. And then we can take that data again and uh, we're going to set it for us. Same thing, remember, anytime we want to use uh, data throughout our application here, we have to do a use state on it. So we're gonna select data, set select data, equals use state and in here we need to have it as an array right here our select here is a drop down of objects here so uh, we're going to take that and we're going to set it set select data to the data so it pulls that information converts it to json set or select data here so that we can use it you can do a catch right here if you want error and i'll just console log it very simple error right here. So how do we use it down here? This is a function right here that's fetching. How are we going to get it to populate down there? So uh, let's use this thing called use effect. Use effect is a function here. Every time the application runs, it runs this first. Use effect always processes first. Put it right here. We're going to call this function fetch data because we want that to run first every time this application loads. It's going to run this, run the fetch data, pull our info, set our data here to the select data, and now we can use this throughout the application. So initially when this page loads, it's gonna load all that data for us, and we can use this select data now. And I'm gonna create a component down here called uh, select dropdown. So it's going to run that component for us here. Let's do a const select drop down uh, uppercase if you notice there arrow function return in our component here I'm going to map through our uh, select data right here so let's do a select uh, I want to map through it first then I'll show you how to save the value so let's do a right here uh, select data dot map and uh, we're we're going to make sure that there is data. That's why I put a question mark. Then we're going to map through it, map through the items and index. And we're going to map through it through the options, right? We need to output option or option. 
and then the option, let's give it a value equals item.website. Uh, that is this value right here. Here's the item.website. Now here's the second item website, right? We're going to take all this website information and let's output it here as well. Item.website. So we have the values for that and it also takes in a key. React takes in a key. That's why we have this index. Actually, this key index, it needs to be really unique. And they suggest for it to not use an index, like a number of one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. The unique value in here is really the website because that's a different website for each key. So we have a unique key value. We have the option here. So you see what's happening. We're taking all of the select data that we fetched initially when the app runs using use effect, outputting the select drop down menu with all the options, but we need to save this value still. Same thing with the input right here, right? Every time something changes, we need to save that value. So let's go up here and we need another state. We have our select data state for that, but we need a const, let's call it select value state. Set select value equals use state. And this value is going to be a string because the items is a string. And let's do up here value equals select value it's the same thing with our input and text area fields on change equals and we have the event i'm going to take in and we're going to say select or set select value i'm going to set that to the event dot target dot value so there we go anytime it changes we're setting that value to the change uh, the way we do the select in here in react we give it a value Anytime it changes, it remembers that value and it will look for it in the option. And in HTML, whenever you're selecting something, you can say select or select it, or it's, I think it's called one of those selected or something. And then it knows to save that selected value on the screen here. So React knows that and uses that value and it will, it will set this code for us. So we don't need that select in there. Select drop down. So we have our component, select drop down. So that whole component is going to be outputted here. Let's save it. Hopefully it runs here. Let's go refresh. And here's the drop down with all the values. So now we select it, it saves that value. And that is now, everything here is now available when I submit. So let's go down here to the submit and we will say select value. There we go. So it's gonna say email, show the select value message when we submit. Let's go into our console here for the developer. Here console is empty. I will set this to Anastasia right there. Test, submit, and there we go. Kodokai, the email, Anastasia that I selected, test message. If I select another one, submit that, and there it is. It saved that value for us. So you see how this contact form works now? Let's go over it again. When the form preloads, it's using US, use effect. This thing gets called first. It's gonna fetch that data using our react fetch function here it's going to fetch it through our api that we want we can we can connect to a database if we want and collect all of the select data but we're not we are connecting to an api to pull that data setting the data to json we are setting that data right here so that we can use it throughout our application and then we're setting up our select drop down box by mapping through it setting all the values to it and then it outputs it down here and using that component all of our input boxes here, it's also anything that changes, we're setting that value. So since all the values are captured and saved when we hit this handle submit, it goes to this function where it stops the submit from happening. We can check everything and then we can use that to do whatever we want. We can post this to our database, then process our email and do everything down here. Like we can process it all. This is just an extra for you. Um, there is a known bug with use effect that it will, Initially, when the page loads, it will run this fetch data. It will load this. And then actually when it unmounts it, it's going to run it again. So it runs this twice, actually. How we get that around that is we have to do a let processing equals true. Uh, we pass in the processing to our fetch data. So this is initially true. We're going to process it as true. And then we're going to return as false because we only want to run it once. Now we return this as false. Processing equals false. So you see it's true, it runs it, set it to false, it's not gonna run again. So in here we need to pass it through, processing. And actually down here we need to now say, if processing, then run this. 
Otherwise, don't run it again. <laughs> Only run it if it's true. Run it once, exit the function, set to false, and then when use effect unmounts and it runs it again, it's gonna see that it's false. It's not gonna run this a second time. So it's just a little extra right here. Uh, a lot of developers run into this. Just wanna show you that. Initially, it's uh, performance issues, you know, that type of thing. All right, so I wanna move on to comparing our React fetch right here to another fetch called Axios. Let me stop the server here, and we are going to do an npm install Axios, just like that. I recommend Axios more. I've done a lot of research on this, and it does look like Axios is the better choice to use than the React fetch. We installed Axios. Let's import it. Axios right there from Axios. All right. So I'm going to create a new fetch function in here, and I'm going to show you the difference between both of them here. We're going to do a const Axios fetch data. Same exact thing here. I'm going to copy all this for our Axios. So in Axios here, this will be called Axios.get. They have different functions in here, one for get, one for post. And this is a little bit more clear because in our React fetch here, the default is to get. But we can also add a option equals method get. And then we pass that option in here. This is for the React, fetch data React. Uh, React takes in options here, and we can tell it to do a get or post, right? And that's how React does it. It's just you call this fetch, pass in the option. And when we're posting here, we give it other post values. The default for this is get, so we don't need that. But Axios is clear. It says get, and if I'm doing a post, we're going to say post, just like that. But the post takes in options, right? Same thing. Do an const options equals, and we can pass in the option. And in our post option for Axios here, uh, you know, like you can tell it email, message, like all the default stuff that you want to post. So you see how simple that is? We can take our values and post it. Well, look at the React post here. If I put this back, options, and in React post here, we have to say a lot more. We have to tell it a method. We have to give it headers. We're, uh, we have to say the content type. Don't forget the comment here. So content type, and then we tell it application slash JSON, and then you gotta pass like the body here and then this is where we have to like json.stringify, whoops. Then we stringify this whole json data that we gotta pass through. You know, it's like, it's so much more. And then you pass through the email, the message. So like, look at how much more you have to type in for the headers and all this just to pass in the function to post it compared to Axios here. And Axios does run a little bit faster. Uh, that's what I've read. And so it's just a little bit better. I really suggest installing Axios to do your get and post. It's very clear. You say get, you say post. And Axios, you don't need to convert this to JSON. Here's an, another step. It just re returns the response and then the response.data. That's how Axios works. You, you get this. Uh, that's the get. Let's comment this out. It returns us the response, then we take that response dot data and we can set it. And so look at the extra step, you know, that you have to take with React, you have to convert it to JSON, you gotta do this and that. So uh, yeah, I really suggest Axios over the React. And I notice a lot more developers are just using Axios now. And so here, let me just comment this out. And we're gonna do an Axios fetch on this one. Axios. And same thing, I'm passing through processing on it. I'm do, still doing an async on it. Processing here, go through that, get that. NPM start, and then there you go. You see that it runs the same way. It gets that the same way. And yeah, use Axios when you're fetching and posting data. And so, you know, to complete this project, after we do an unclick, we really would check everything to make sure the email is good. There's a message in here before we process this and when I say process we're really just posting this we can do an axio post here 
And so we can take Axios, we can post it to our API on our website here to process this email, to save the data in our database, and then we email it using an email service. And so a lot of that is back end stuff. And so I think in the next tutorial here, I'm gonna go through now back end URL processing, how to post data to an API on our back end. Because you notice right here, we're using an API on another website's back end. This is a back end that this website created to output this API data for us, this JSON data. We want to do the same thing on our website. And now we're going to create some back end API endpoints so that we can process, do our data. And with that API in our back end, we can pull data from our database and give us our, our same thing, just like this JSON data. And that's what a lot of other tutorials I'm noticing that when they're running through these examples with you, they're mainly pulling this JSON data from other websites using their API backend endpoints. But we want to create our own and no one really talks about that. They don't talk about this backend API URL. And uh, I, I went through this in my very first React tutorial and I think it cleared it up for a lot of people that didn't really, really know that you have a front end URL right here where you can call this, but you can also have a back end with a different port. And the back end, you can call the same URL and have it process back end data by pulling data and outputting JSON data for us, API stuff from our own website to get data from our own website so that we can use it. So that's what I want to cover in the next one. We're going to go through setting up our back end so that we can do some APIs or in the back end. And when I say APIs in our back end, we will be calling it just like this. It will be like localhost, different port, and then we can call the contact, you know, API or something to get us this data instead of going through another website. So I'll see you guys in that next tutorial. Stay tuned. Make sure you like, subscribe to these videos. Code a out.